All right, in this video I'm going to provide a proof of the quotient rule. We introduced the quotient rule, we used it to work out some derivatives of some quotients, but all the while I never actually proved the quotient rule. So here's where we're going to prove it. We have to tie this back to the definition of derivative. So what that means is I need to work out the value of the limit, which gives this derivative. So it's the limit as h goes to 0 of f of x plus h all over g of x plus h minus f of x all over g of x all over h. I'm going to have to work out the value of this limit. The only thing I have to work with are the fact that f and g are differentiable. So the limits of this form involving just the function f and just the function g, I know their values are going to be the derivatives of the function. So I'm going to try to incorporate that in here somehow. See if I can use it to my advantage. So before I do that, I'm going to start to simplify this expression. Put everything over a common denominator. So my common denominator is g of x plus h times g of x. So this becomes a g of x f of x plus h minus f of x g of x plus h. And that's over our common denominator of h times g of x times g of x plus h. Okay, now what can I do? Well, I'm going to do much like I did in the proof of the product rule. The proof of the product rule, I inserted zero in a fancy way and then tried to get the limit uh, involving just the f's and the g's in terms of their derivatives showing themselves. So I'm going to do that here as well. Now how do I do that? Well, I'm going to add in, I've got an f of x plus h here. I would really like to have an f of x partnered with it. So how can I do that? Well, I'm going to subtract off a g of x times f of x. And so then I could factor out the g of x and at least I get an f of x plus h minus f of x and that's starting to resemble the derivative of f. Now if I subtract that off, then I'm going to have to add it back in. So g of x and f of x, I add it back in there. So that what I've essentially done is add 0 in to this expression in a strategic way. And then I've got the minus f of x, g of x plus h, that's still hanging on on the end. And all of that's over this h, g of x, g of x plus h. By the way, at this point, you should start to see where the square of g is coming from in the denominator of the quotient rule. I can see I've got two copies of g in the bottom here. One of them is g of x plus h, but as h goes to 0, that's just going to go to g of x. So I get a g of x squared in the bottom. You can see where that's coming from now. So let's see about the rest. Limit as h goes to 0. So I'm going to split these things up. I've got a g of x in common with both of those first terms, so I pull that out. And I've got an f of x plus h minus f of x left over in those terms there. I've got an h on the bottom. I'm going to stick that under that. And I've got this g of x and g of x plus h. That's actually underneath everything. And what's next? Well, what's next is I've got this, these other two terms. I've got an f of x in common with them. But in fact, when I try to get the derivative of g to, uh, in terms of the limit to show itself in here, I need a g of x plus h minus g of x. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor out a negative f of x from both of these things. That leaves me with a g of x plus h and a minus g of x. And again, that h that was in the bottom can now get thrown under there. And now we're done. Because as h goes to 0, this expression goes to f prime of x. This expression goes to g prime of x. And this thing here goes to g of x. Multiplied with the g of x that's already there. In the limit, we get that it's g of x times f prime of x minus f of x times g prime of x all over g of x squared. And so there is our proof of the quotient rule from the definition of derivative.